yeah welcome to Redoubt Park here in the city of Williamsburg um, if you can kind of notice you and just by the names you can see these little fortifications up here and a battle happened here during the American Civil War so you know you, you get out here in Hampton Roads and you start learning about the history down here you know everybody thinks of Williamsburg former capital of Virginia um, as the the beginnings of well not the beginnings but its history is all about colonial America and that's what Williamsburg really builds itself up to be as far as tourism um, but yeah you come down here and you learn about uh, a little bit more about the Civil War and some of these battles, you know, in the history books, it's all about Gettysburg and Antietam and, you know, all the major battles. But you come to places like this and you learn about these uh, little small victories that each side had um, against each other. Williamsburg was in control of uh, the Confederates at the beginning of the war. So the Battle of Williamsburg happened in May of 1862. So this is very early on in the war. And this is part of the Peninsula Campaign. Um, you, you know from previous videos, or if you don't know, Fort Monroe, which is down in Hampton, Virginia, was in the control of the Union. It stayed in con Union hands for the entire duration of the Civil War. Um, but the concern of the Confederates were, was that any troops coming out of that base, and we're talking about a, a major uh, fort, for the Union. Um, any kind of troops that came out of that base, it would have been a clear path up to Richmond. So it took me about 30 miles to get up here. It's another 50 miles from here to get to Richmond. So we're talking about 80 miles. I don't know how long that would have taken um, troops to march up on foot as far as days, weeks, I'm not sure. Um, but that was the concern. Early on in the war, Richmond really wasn't uh, fortified. It was easy pickings. And that was the Union's plan from the get-go. As soon as we capture Richmond, this war will be over in less than a year. Well, we all know it didn't turn out that way. But uh, Confederate General, I don't know his first name, but Magruder, um, came to this spot in 61, said, yeah, we need to put some fortifications up, block the Union, march up to Richmond, and, um, you know, just sort of delay them. I don't think the game plan for the Confederates was to win a battle here, um, but rather delay the Union from just marching on Richmond, um, giving the Confederates enough time to fortify and be able to get the men and the supplies needed to defend Richmond. But yeah, when I was here last, this if I remember correctly, this park is a little hilly. And so we're we're going to My camera was crooked, so I apologize for that if it's been crooked. But we're going to give it our best effort. Um I'm in my second trimester of pregnancy. And so um, I haven't been dealing well with the hills, but I have my vomit bag in case I need it. If I start feeling too ill, I'll bring my little behind back on up to my car. But I really need to get out the house. This is really the only method of uh, exercise or only means of exercise I get nowadays but I haven't been able to do it with just because of the rain I've been sick I tried to escape said rain but while we were getting rain other parts of Virginia and North Carolina were getting snow we're gonna take some pictures and keep our eyes open um, I want to try not to be so paranoid as you guys know how I am on Civil War trails. I just think they're all haunted. But see, I like it when it's like this, um, you know, I can see the forest through the trees. You know, something like summertime 
when it's all dense with leaf leaves and stuff oh my god my paranoia increases but yeah further updates uh, officer thick and i are a little bit over 20 hours 24 hours oh a nice little creek we are a little bit over uh 24 hours into marriage um it uh it feels different but i don't know how to explain it um it feels good it's a good different i i really enjoy uh being married but it's only been 24 hours let's see how i feel after 10 15 20 30 years these little creeks i just love them makes me uh miss being back at home in michigan i would uh volunteer with an organization um to do water quality assessments and i'm not sure if this is a fresh water stream it could be brackish water uh, I'm, I'm thinking fresh water um but yeah i would evaluate uh fresh water streams in uh the greater ann arbor area and uh you know, I would check for benthic organisms, which are organisms that um, lie in the, you know, the, the bottom layer of a, of a stream, lake, whatever it could, whatever the water uh, would be. But I, I stuck to the creeks and, and rivers and, and streams and whatnot. And of course, we would judge water quality by the, um, was it mayflies or stoneflies? I forget, I want to say it was mayflies. If you had a good number of mayflies, um, caddisflies, you know, uh, fish in there, um, you know, good organisms in there, they would let you know just how good the water quality was of a stream. But yeah, I met a, I met a good friend when I volunteered for that organization and he's passed away. When I met him, he was, in his late 70s, early 80s. He um, was a retired professor from Vanderbilt. And um, I think he may have taught at University of Michigan as an emeritus. Um, but uh, Dr. Wilson, a great memory. His wife let me know a few years ago that he passed away. Very, uh, instrumental in you know steering me towards the sciences i went on the path of food he was in water and um yeah he was one of the people who uh wrote my recommendation to go to wvu so i'll always appreciate dr wilson I could have sworn I saw somebody walking over there. And if I don't see them soon, I'm gonna think it's a ghost. I don't appreciate that. All right, so inside readout number two. Now I'm not gonna go deep in here, okay? Cause that's when um, my, the, you know, the hair on my skin starts uh, rising. I don't appreciate it. I don't like it. So we just gonna get a nice little view. We gonna get some pictures here. We gonna get a nice little view. From here. And you know, nowhere other than the readouts, I have felt a presence at other readouts and I'm really not feeling it here. Um, but I shouldn't be talking trash cause that's when stuff starts happening. But two places that I've been in Virginia where I've just not felt right well three i should say um the first one being cold harbor i believe that's in mechanicsburg or mechanicsville um you know a cool place to discover it's supposed to be a driving tour but you can walk it um the readouts there um it feels like somebody's watching you what the big old boom but anyway, this is the end of the park here, so it's not a loop. You have to go back back out. Now, I'll, I'll let you guys know the um, mileage here when we make our way. But yeah, anyway, Stan River Battlefield Park. Um, 
pretty spooky out there, especially when you find yourself alone. Um, not a good feeling. And then Petersburg. Um, you know, knowing the history there, so many men lost their lives. Um, a devastating battle. Uh, a loss for the um, Union. Ultimately ended up in the siege of Petersburg for nine months after, you know, the Union figured out that they aren't going to take that battle in one day. I, I, I was thinking the other day, I said, I've never really told y'all how Officer Thick got his name. Okay, so story time. When I first met Officer Thick in 2018, um, I, was, I was trying to think of a name for him. Um, him being a police officer, he kind of wants to be a little bit more in the background, be more reserved. If you're going to meet him, it'll be because you're getting a ticket. You'll never know that it's Officer Dick. So, he, um, I, I was just thinking, and my mom came to me, was like, I already, I already told my parents that I was dating somebody. And they said, well, my friend wanted to know more about your boyfriend. Why don't you talk about your boyfriend in, in, in the videos? And I was like, well, I really don't have an aim for him. And so as she said that, that night, Officer Thick came to me with a story about how, well, not a story, but um, he came to me on a case he had been working on that night when he came home um, about how a victim wanted to speak to the thick one. So, of course, his, he had a partner on scene um, who was first, he was second to respond and the victim wanted to speak to the thick one and officer thick is a big boy you've all seen that um he's he's a, he's he's thick he's got cake for days um that's just what i went with I asked him if it was okay to call him officer thick and he was fine with it it has grown on him he likes it and so that's that's just what I started calling him, and it's it's kind of stuck. And so that's just, now you guys have the story of how Officer Thick became Officer Thick. But it looks like I have waddled my way up to the trailhead. Let's check the mileage. We are at one point two eight miles. I'm gonna head to my car gonna get back home to hubby and I hope you enjoyed a little bit about the battlefield hope you enjoyed the updates keep on watching I'll get out as I can as a uh, baby J and the weather allows me to I hope you are taking care in this crazy COVID weather uh, insurrection world of ours and I will catch up with you on the next hike fishing trip I'm, I'm starting to feel the itch i know the yellow perch are, are running in certain areas of virginia and i love yellow perch but i'll catch up with you wherever i may be peace